Welcome back to the Credible Dev YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about the Cloud Resume Challenge. This is a challenge I stumbled across on Reddit when I was looking for opportunities or guides, ways, anything to learn more about Azure services and how they connect. Ones that I'm not really familiar with like Function Apps and Cosmos DB and the CDN and all these other things that were offered by Azure. And when I was looking for that, I came across a Reddit post uh, where people were suggesting to do the cloud resume challenge. So I looked it up and I got pretty excited when I looked at it because it looked like it was going to connect a lot of the different things that I wanted to learn about. So I dove right into it and I've created a website following this guide. So this guide can be applied to anything, or I should say challenge, not a guide, because it's it's loosely a guide, which we'll talk about in a moment, but it can be applied to AWS or Google, not just Azure. So if Azure's not your thing and you're wanting to get into AWS, then I suggest that you try this out as well. So the challenge is all about creating a resume that's gonna be publicly available on the web, and the services that are used are all coming from the cloud, so like for Azure, you know, using blob storage, using the Cosmos DB, the function app, and all these different services to host and deploy the resume. Now, I wasn't going to go about doing a resume. That wasn't really my purpose. So I just created a basic site uh, to basically do the same thing. And the challenge gives you a framework to, to work by. It doesn't give you like a step-by-step -step guide there's really not a lot of guidance other than some suggestions on what services that you should use in Azure, AWS, what have you. But it's not going to hold your hand. It's not going to show you what buttons to click or any of that. It's just a framework on how you should approach this challenge. There is a book that you can purchase that goes along with it, which I highly suggest you do because the book it not only gives you a little more detail and it may be a little more guidance, but it also gives you like ways you can branch off from this. So like if you're wanting to learn more about security in the cloud, then at each step of the challenge, there'll be additional steps that you could take that are more security focused. Or if you want to be an app developer in the cloud, there'll be more steps that you could complete that align more with that. So let's go ahead and take a look um, at an example here of what you need to do. So the purpose of this was to create the resume to help people get jobs in the cloud. And this applies to people who don't have any technology background at all or people who already work in tech but want to move into the cloud. That's the approach that uh, the creator of this challenge took. And if you purchase the book, there's some examples in there. Uh, throughout the book of people who took this challenge and landed a cloud job. Some of them didn't even work in tech at all. One of them in particular was a plumber beforehand. So anyways, that's that's the direction that this takes. So the first step is to get a certification, just the base certification for the Azure track. They recommend the AZ900, which I would agree with. It gives you a pretty fundamental, broad overview of Azure. So then you need to build a resume site in HTML and you're going to style it with CSS and then you're going to make that website available through the Azure storage using Blob and then it takes you into HTTPS which you're going to do through Azure CDN. Then you're going to get a domain name and you're going to point that uh, to your static website using Azure DNS and you're going to need to build some JavaScript into your site that's going to call this function app that you'll create later. You'll create a database which the function app is going to talk to and uh, retrieve account and update account of how many visitors have come to your resume. Then you're going to build the API, which is the function app that I was talking about. And you can write that in many different languages. I chose Python, Python for mine. And then uh, you should set up tests so that when you deploy your code, it gets tested first before it's actually deployed to the live uh, environment. Then they talk about infrastructure as code, which is an important part of cloud. When you work in the cloud in a corporate environment, you're going to work with infrastructure as code, which is basically going to deploy all your resources in the cloud following a template which I haven't done that part yet and I haven't done the test part yet. 
Then you have source control like GitHub where you want to store your code at. And then you're going to tie it all together with the CI CD pipeline using GitHub actions or whatever, you know, if you didn't use GitHub, whatever is available in the platform that you chose for your code repository. So you're going to tie all that together. So when you make updates to your code and you push it up to GitHub, it gets tested and deployed to your production environment. And at the end, you're supposed to write a blog post, which I haven't done. I'm not even sure I'm going to do. Uh, that kind of details your journey and, and, you know, the experience that you had and what you did and struggles that you had, things like that. And that's, you know, the broad framework of the challenge here. And like I said, if you get the book, it's more detailed. Each one of these steps gives more detail, gives a little reasoning on why you would want to do this, that sort of thing. So first, we'll take a look at what I created. And it's a simple site at heyitsadam.cloud. And I used a Bing chat to uh, generate this avatar for me. And we have the visitor counter here. This is what uh, the function app and the Cosmos DB part of it is generating on the site with some JavaScript uh, behind the scenes there to call the function app. And then I have a small little graph here or diagram here that shows you kind of how it's laid out and how the pieces connect. And then down here, I kind of explained what it was built with. Um, the site is statically hosted on Azure Blob Storage. It's served using a custom domain, which is tied up with Azure DNS and the CDN that's available in Azure. Has some JavaScript running behind the site that reaches out and triggers the function app, which then reaches out to Cosmos DB for retrieving and storing the visitor count and then uh, the GitHub actions for the CI/CD pipeline. So that way I can just update my code, push it to GitHub, and everything magically happens, including purging the CDN cache. So if we go into my Azure tenant, you'll see there's quite a few uh, different resources here. Now, I didn't create every one of these. Some of these got created as I was going along. You know, you create a function app, and it creates an app service plan, and all these sorts of things that it does automatically. But uh, we do have the storage account. This is where the website is hosted at, uh, where the actual files are. So if we go in here and we go to containers, we'll see there's a web container here that has all of our HTML and our CSS, JavaScript, etc. So that's where the files are stored. And then uh, we've got a custom domain, which was, hey, it's adam.cloud which is tied up with Azure DNS. So when I purchased the domain, I pointed the name servers to these that are listed here. And that gets my domain connected into uh, Azure. And then we're using the CDN to give us HTTPS. And it's all kind of bundled together. The Azure DNS, the storage and the static site that's on that blob storage and uh, the CDN are all connected together. So, you know, a user types into their browser the website address, it goes out Azure DNS, and then it goes to the uh, CDN, and then that delivers the site to the user with HTTPS. It has a certificate that Azure automatically put on there for me. Very simple to set up. And all this was just following guides on Microsoft Learn for the most part. This part of it is probably the easiest part. You know, getting the website up here and getting the CDN set up, that kind of thing was probably the easiest part for me. The more difficult part was Cosmos DB. It's not hard to create a Cosmos DB, but working with Cosmos DB, I don't have a lot of experience with anything other than SQL and Cosmos DB works differently. So I had to do a bit of research and reading to understand how it works. But we have uh, the database here. And if we go into the data explorer, and I have a container here called counter. And if we go into that, I have an item with the ID of one. And this is what I'm pulling out and updating. Uh, so you can see in here it has a value called count, and this is how I'm getting the value to my website, and then, of course, I update it back here in the database. And that all happens through the function app, 
which I set up in VS Code. There are extensions that you can get that will expose your Azure resources in VS Code so you can more easily work with the uh, options that are available in Azure, like the Function app. You'll be able to easily to, you know, test everything locally and then push it up here to your Function app to test it in your live environment. So if we go into files here, we'll see that I have a function app with um, this Python file. I wrote mine in Python. And this is the code that gets triggered whenever someone visits the website. There's JavaScript run behind the website that reaches out to this function app. And when it does, it triggers the code that's in here. And this code reaches out to the Cosmos DB and it fetches that count value, increments it, updates it in the database, and then at the end, it returns that count here back to the JavaScript that's running on the website, so then it can be shown on the website. And the function app, you'll see it in here, right here at the top, this app, hey, it's Adam. This is the actual function app, and we can see we have a HTTP trigger here, what that means is, is whenever a get or a post request or what have you is sent to this endpoint, it's going to trigger the function that's inside there, which was the Python code that I just showed you. So it's not difficult, uh, but uh, setting up the function app and the Cosmos DB, because I didn't have any experience with those beforehand, took most of my time. And then I'd never done uh, the CI/CD pipeline from GitHub to Azure. So that took a little bit of finagling too to get it working right. So that way when I update my code and I push it to GitHub, everything gets updated in Azure. And like I said, I still have some more things to do here with like creating an ARM template that's going to create my uh, function app and my Cosmos DB and all that automatically for me. That's one of the steps of the challenge. Also the test, when my function app gets deployed, before that we wanna test the code to make sure that it's not gonna break anything and it's working the way that I expect it to. So implementing those tests is still something that I need to do. Uh, but overall, this has been a really fun challenge. I had a great time doing it and I learned a ton about Azure resources that I never had experience with before. So I definitely suggest that you try out this challenge if you want to learn more about the cloud. Maybe you're wanting to shift into a cloud-related related job. It's a great way to go because it doesn't hold your hand. It's not a tutorial, so you're going to have to go out and research these uh, services yourself on how to implement them and use them and tie them all together, which is one of the skills, the ability to research that and read and comprehend the documentation that makes an excellent uh, IT worker. Uh, no matter what part of IT that you're going into, that ability to be able to research and comprehend the documentation and implement it and tie it together, all that is an essential skill for you to succeed. So this challenge will definitely foster and help you build those abilities. And that's really all I got for you today. I just wanted to show you this, uh, what I've been working on, and uh, I'll have everything linked down below so you can check out this challenge. If you do, like I said, I highly recommend that you purchase the book. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but the book just gives you a lot more value. There's a lot of stories in there that you can read, and I just highly suggest it. So that's all I got for you today. I hope everybody has a great week, and Happy New Year.